Okay, so now we're going to look at uh, other kinds of proofs. Okay, so um, we're going to look at vacuous and trivial proofs. And this might seem like a bit silly, but they're very useful in proving uh, mostly parts of theorems. Okay, uh, so a lot of theorems you have to kind of look at different cases. And uh, vacuous and trivial proofs um, help prove like the sort of some of the simple cases in the theorem. All right, so let's look at this one. Uh, so vacuous proof, we can quickly prove that a conditional statement is true when we know that P is false, right? Because if P then Q must be true when P is false. So that comes from the truth table for the conditional, right? So if I have PQ and I look at the implication, All right, then I have my P's and my Q's right here, right? My ones and zeros. Um, true, false, true, true. All right, so if I know that that statement P is false, then that implication, the theorem is true by default. You don't really need to do anything. All right, so that's called a vacuous proof. Okay, so let's look at an example where that might arise. So I have this proposition Pn that says if n is bigger than 1, then n squared is bigger than n. Notice that, that this looks like a proof by induction, right? So I want to show that the proposition P0 is true, right? So this is like the basis case in, in, in our proof by induction. So P0 right, says that if zero is bigger than one, then zero squared is bigger than zero. Okay, so that's what P zero is right here. Well, this is false right here. My P, my premise is false. So this statement right here, if zero is bigger than one, then zero squared is bigger than zero, this whole statement right here is true. Okay. And this is because this is the vacuous case. So because this is not fulfilled to start with, it doesn't really matter what comes after. All right, so that's, a, that's an example of a vacuous proof. Now, now a trivial proof is kind of opposite. We can also quickly prove that a conditional sp statement if P then Q is true when we know that Q is true. Okay, so if we know that the conclusion is true, all right, so the conclusion is one or one, then the conditional must always be true. It's kind of no matter whether your premise it, well, P is true or false. Okay, so if you know your conclusion is true, then this is trivial, okay? You don't need to uh, to do anything. Okay, so let's see. So if a and b are positive integers with a is bigger than b, then a squared, a to the n is going to be bigger than b to the n, where the universe is all non-negative integers. Show that p0 is true. So again, we're showing a case for the theorem, the case that n is 0. That's what sort of vacuous and trivial proofs are often uh, used to show just a small case out of a bigger theorem. Right? So P0, if I translate it, so basically if A bigger than B, then A to the 0 is going to be bigger than or equal to B to the 0. But this is 1, is bigger than or equal to 1, so my Q is true automatically because this is true. Uh, so that means that this whole statement, this conditional, uh, is true by default. It's true trivially, trivially basically, because you know the conclusion is true. All right. So these are just to, it's good to have knowledge of these because they are used as part of bigger proofs. All right, another kind of way to prove things um, is proof by counterexamples, okay? So we've seen when we're looking at um, quantifiers, 
that a statement of the uh, form for all x, um, p of x is true, is false, uh, we only need to find one counterexample, one example x uh, for which uh, p is going to be false. All right. Um, so um, let's look at example nine. Okay. So show that the statement every positive integer is the sum of the squares of two integers is a false statement. Okay. So this is of this type. All right. Because for every positive integer x my p, my statement that I'm um, looking at, is the, the sum of the squares of two integers. All right. Um, so to show that this statement is false, we just need one counterexample. All right. So um, let's see. Can we come up? So if every positive integer is the sum of the squares of two integers. Um, two, maybe two is not, let's, let's see, three is one plus two, okay? So this is a counterexample. Right, because here's a positive integer right here, and sum of squares of two integers, well, one is a perfect square, but two is not a perfect, perfect square. So that doesn't work, right? And so this is an example where an integer is formed. Um, this cannot be written as the sum of two squares. Okay. Um, this is the only way that three can be written as sum of two numbers um, or two integers. All right. Am I looking at positive integers? I can actually I could have one plus two. I could have zero plus three. Um, but squares are going to be positive. So yeah, it doesn't matter if I have um, negative integers because I want to square them. Uh, so these will always end up as positive. All right, good. So this is a good counterexample. Excellent. Uh, so let's look at one more method of proof. There are more ways to prove things besides these, but the ones that we covered in this lesson are uh, very once used a lot, very kind of basic ones. Um, so proof by cases must cover all possible cases that arise in a theorem. Okay. So often these have to do with like things with integers. So those are great examples of proofs by cases. It says, prove that if n is an integer, then n squared is bigger than or equal to n. All right. So the cases that we need to consider, let's look at case one. Uh, how about when n equals to zero? All right. That's always a good one to look at, sort of the middle, uh, not positive, not negative. So when n equals to zero, I have zero squared bigger than or equal to zero, which is true. Right, so this is um, a trivial, right? So this is a trivial proof because the conclusion is is true automatically. All right, let's look at case two. Case two. All right, let's look at n is a negative. N is negative integer so it's z minus all right i'm kind of taking the easy ones first okay so we want to um see if n squared is bigger than or equal to n all right so n squared is going to be a positive number positive integer and n is a negative number uh -huh. And I know that positive numbers are bigger than negative numbers. Um, so this is also true. Okay. Case three. Last set of numbers left for integers are positive integers, right? So n is a positive integer. All right. 
So for a positive integer, I want to show that n squared is bigger than or equal to n. All right, so this would be, I know it makes common sense, okay, but often common sense kind of doesn't wash with, let's prove this in math, but this is a proof by induction, right? So let's have our bases. All right, so we're going to use our bases to be n is 1 because the n is 0 was covered here. All right, so for n is 1, we have 1 squared is bigger than or equal to 1, which works. Now our inductive step, we're looking at case pk, which is k squared bigger than or equal to k. We assume this is true. And we want to show that the pk plus 1 case, which is k plus 1 squared, is bigger than or equal to k plus 1. We want to show that that's true. All right. So somehow we need to transform this one into this one. So we can see that I can add one to both sides. Okay, so let me use a different color. So let's add one to both sides. So we have k squared plus 1 is bigger than k plus 1. Bigger than or equal. There we go. All right. Um, okay, so what now? Now I need to show that this is bigger than k plus 1 squared for this to work. Oh, this is less, right, and it needs to go that way, of course. Okay, so I need to show, so can I show the k squared plus 1 is less than k plus 1 squared. Okay, because basically I want to continue my inequality on this side. So this is the middleman I would cross out, and this inequality will sort of hold with um, this number right here being bigger than or equal to that number. Okay, so I, because now here, because I can expand this out. I have k squared plus 2k plus 1. And because this number is a positive integer, right, so actually it's bigger than 1, right, um, bigger than or equal to 1, um, then this has to be bigger than k plus 1. So because k is bigger than or equal to 1, I have k, plus, k squared plus 1 here plus something that's at least 2 then that's going to be bigger than k squared plus 1. All right, so this shows that k plus 1 squared is bigger than k squared plus 1, which is bigger than or equal to k plus 1. So this completed the proof by induction. Okay, so we have consider all the cases for n being an integer. n is 0, n is negative, n is positive, and it was true in all cases. So that it must be true for all integers. So that's an example of a proof by cases.